What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Today we are sitting in a 2022 Lexus RX350, and we are going to teach you how to use the all-speed dynamic radar cruise control and the lane tracing assist. So on this particular Lexus, I know the button layout is a little bit different on some of them depending on the steering wheel. What we're going to use is the little stock that's at about four o'clock on the right-hand side, and then these two buttons on the right-hand side of the steering wheel as well. So first of all, for the dynamic radar cruise control, if we push this button on the end of the little stock, that turns the system on. And we see right here, radar cruise active. Please pay attention to other vehicles. So what the radar cruise control does is it can lock on to the car in front of us and maintain a distance from that car. And because this is the all speed dynamic radar cruise control, it can bring the vehicle to a complete stop. Now you'll notice it says hold with a little picture of a speedometer. So if you push and hold that button, you just turn the regular cruise control on, but that's not what we're talking about today. So we're just gonna push it one time briefly to turn the radar cruise control on. Once we're on the move, we bump that stock down to set our speed. We bump up to resume the speed that will come into play. If we pull this stock towards ourselves, that will cancel the speed. And you can also just hit the brakes to cancel it as well. Now, once we have the radar cruise control active, that's when these two buttons on the steering wheel come into play. This one with like the sonar waves coming out of the car, that is to adjust the following distance between us and the car in front of us. And this one right here with the car in between the lanes, that is how we turn on the lane tracing assist. Now, once the dynamic radar cruise control is active, we can turn on the lane tracing assist. And what that does, as long as the car's camera can read the lines that differentiate the lanes, it actually controls the steering a little bit so that uh, it'll keep you in your lane. You still need to keep your hands on the steering wheel. You still need to pay attention to where the vehicle is going and um, you're still driving the car. It's not meant to be a self-driving system, it's just meant to be a driver assistance system. So, with all that being said, let's get this beauty out on the road and demonstrate this for you. All right, so we are out on the road, so step one, we push the little button on the end of that stock, and then we bump down on the stock to set the speed, and you can see here, my speed is set to 37 miles per hour, and I am locked onto the car in front of me. The car in front of me is coming to a complete stop at this stoplight right here. And the Lexus has just brought itself to a stop on its own. That is the beauty of the all speed dynamic radar cruise control. Now, we're gonna start moving again. Just bump up RES to resume. And the car is accelerating. I am not putting my foot on the gas or anything like that. The car is moving forward on its own. And let's see. So the car in front of me has gotten away from me just a little bit. Now we are locked back onto it and we are slowing down at a reasonable pace. So I'm just going to let this car do its thing. Now, one thing to be mindful of when you're using this radar cruise control system is it's meant to be locked on to that car in front of you and follow its maneuvers. So if you're on some kind of weird highway situation where like you've got it set to 65 and it's the first stoplight for 10 miles up ahead and you can see everybody is stopped, don't rely on the dynamic radar cruise control to bring you to a complete stop in that scenario. If it's not locked onto the car in front of you and that car's not slowing down, just hit the brake, take control of the system, and um, make sure that you're not doing anything crazy. Because, like, if you're headed towards a brick wall with the dynamic radar cruise control on, that's not what it's designed to do. So just keep that in mind. Now the light is turning green again, which means that we are going to need to resume moving. This time I'm just going to touch the gas pedal, and that's enough to get the dynamic radar cruise control up and moving again. And we are slowing down for these folks to cross the street and we are stopped once again. What I'm gonna do now just for fun is I'm gonna push that button to turn my lane tracing assist on. 
This is a pretty straight road, so it's not going to do much. And I'm gonna tap the gas again to get us moving. But I'll show you what the graphic does. So you see down here, and I apologize for the glare. This car is worse than some for the glare. With the lane tracing assist on, we now have the little white lines and it's telling us uh, when it's reading the lanes and it will adjust the steering slightly. Like I said, this is a uh, pretty straight road, so it's not gonna do much for me here, but on a long highway drive, it is a very nice system. Um, it does take some of the fatigue out of a long drive. So it's something, uh, a similar system that I use in my own personal car very, very often. Something else I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up on this stock three times. What that did was increase my speed from 37 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour, which happens to be the speed limit on this particular road. That's what the plus and the minus on this stock are for to adjust your speed. If you just bump it up or down once, it'll adjust it by one mile per hour. If you bump it down and hold it or bump it up and hold it, it will adjust in five mile per hour increments but we don't need to do that right now. And that's what the display looks like with uh, everything active. Now the other button that I mentioned, this one right here, what this does is it adjusts the following distance. So we're currently doing just under 40 miles an hour and at three bars, which is one of the longer following distances, that's how far away we are. I am going to push that button to shorten it to one bar and we are coming to a complete stop. Oh, he got out of the way. Now, what I did there was I just hit the brakes. The car probably would have come to a complete stop, but what you saw was the white car that I was following got out of my way. So this car was no longer locked onto it. It probably would have locked onto this one and brought itself to a complete stop. But in situations like that, I don't play around. I just hit the brakes, take control of it. Um, just to make sure that there's no mess ups. You don't want to be the uh, person that they're writing stories about that he was trusting his car to drive itself and then look what he did. He plowed into a school bus full of disabled nuns. You don't want that to be you. Something else to keep in mind is what type of vehicle are you following? The example I always use is a flatbed truck with nothing on the bed of the truck. Is this car locked on to the actual rear end of the truck or is it locked on to the back of the cab? So keep an eye on that if it feels like it's getting too close to the vehicle that it's following and you're following a vehicle that's strange shape like that. Um, just keep that in mind. So now I'm just gonna bump up RES to resume and off we go. It wouldn't have worked if I would have hit the gas that time because I hit the brake to cancel it to come to a complete stop. So in a situation like that, you have to hit resume. And we are cruising once again in the Lexus. This system is... Uh, it's not super useful on city streets like this. I mean, obviously it works. And the reason why I film these videos on city streets is... It's just easier from a mechanics perspective to get the car to bring itself to a complete stop because even in Southern California, when you're going out to intentionally get yourself stuck in traffic, sometimes you don't even hit traffic. It's the weirdest thing. Um, but where this system does its best work is in stop and go traffic and specifically that traffic that's like, eh, 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 eh two miles an hour, seven miles an hour, five miles an hour, 12 miles an hour. Now I'm just gonna hit the gas because the car had brought itself to a complete stop because it just handles all of that. That traffic that's just sort of barely creeping along. See, like right now, I'm slowing down, I'm slowing down. This guy's making a right turn, slowing down almost to a stop. I'm still rolling and there goes the car. It's taken off on its own at a very leisurely pace, I must say, which is fitting for a Lexus, but that's fine. We're on city streets. We're not out here drag racing. Um, and again, my hand is on the wheel. I am watching the road. I am a professional filming this video. I know what I'm doing out here on these streets, you understand? Um, 
So it's my point by saying all that is it's not a self-driving system. You still need to watch the road. You still need to keep your hand on the wheel. You still need to pay attention. And this is a situation I'm talking about here. Okay, I'm just going to hit the brakes because there's really nobody in front of me. And the way this system is on this current Lexus is it doesn't understand red lights. It only locks onto the car in front. So... If you're coming up to a stop sign or a red light, it won't stop for that. So that's the reason why you need to be paying attention in this car. You need to have your hand on the wheel. You're still driving. It's just a driver's aid. That's the way that you need to think about it. And it is a fantastic system. It is a very smart system. You know, it could potentially prevent an accident if you're not paying full attention and you have it engaged but you are supposed to be paying attention. So that is my um, disclaimer about that. And with all that being said, that's pretty much all I have to say. You know, push this button to turn it on, bump it down to set it, up and down plus or minus to change the speed, bump it up to resume, pull it towards you to cancel, hit the brake to cancel, push this one to adjust your following distance, and push this to turn your lane tracing assist on and off and it's pretty much all there is to it it's a pretty simple system in the old lexus and it works well so if you have one of these cars try it out uh, always drive safely pay attention and if you have any questions uh, feel free to put those in the comments below i'll do the best i can to answer them thank you so much for watching please like my video subscribe to my channel and have a fantastic day bye bye